As I grow up in my generation, we got a lot of people who just say they're Aboriginal, they say they're Murray, say they're Koori's, and they don't know what that identity means. To me, that identity being the Malori and Kuma, it's more than what being Australian would be. To me, that identity is my life. I, that's all I think about. That's, that's everything I've dreamed of, you know? So like belonging to this, the, one of the, the oldest cultural heritage in the world. Belonging to something bigger than money, something more important than anything. These are permission, these are things that our people have done since our first people walked on this country. Our first people woke up on this country. They see it, their law, their law, their law calls this thing a fire. We're not fucking dumb, we know it's a fire. They dumb, they don't know that it's a ceremony. They don't know when we come together and we practice our religion, our law, that that thing isn't a fire anymore, it is a tool. It is a part of our communication, our being, how we sit down with our mob. When we come here, almost a year ago, March next year will mark a year. We had ceremonies. We were invited here by the First Nations people of Brisbane to participate and practice our ceremony. We've been doing that ever since. They sent 250 police into the bottom to close our ceremony down, to destroy our church to stop us practicing our religion. Months later, they sent at 12 o'clock at night another 150 um, policemen in here to close our church down, to stop our ceremony, to stop our religion. Every other race that comes here to this country are allowed to practice their religion. This is the last challenge for our people. If we are true warriors and we are true people born to this country, we should stand strong in our religion. We should stand strong in our beliefs. We should stand strong in our country. And we should defend it with every last breath we have. No white man's law, no white man's law can stop our law. When we invite our brothers and sisters that have come here to call this place home and they come through that fire and they come through that smoke, they belong to us. We're responsible for them. They are countrymen. They accept our law. A lot of the hostilities that happen when other people come to this country is because they're not given the chance to accept our law and know how to behave on our country. Many of these policemen, they're in the middle, but they got two laws, they got two laws to look after. That's their job. They chose that job and they got two laws. Our law and theirs. One not better than the other. They're the same. Don't be shamed for practicing our law. Our culture is only one part of our society. We have our religion, we have our law, we have our dance, we have our language, and we have our land. Don't forsake one for the other. They all must go together. They all got to stay the same. I'm a Kuma man. I'm a Murray. I come from the West. When I come here to the Jagera, the Turbul, and the Jagera people's country, I ask permission to live here. I behave myself according to their law. And I don't offend anybody. When we make that commitment, 
this country will be a better place to live in. And I ask, we go through the same ceremony, and it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a struggle. We haven't finished. But I ask us all for this commitment that we keep this ceremony, we keep this fire coming. If you come past here at 5 o'clock in the morning and this fire's out, light it up again. If you're walking past here at 12 o'clock at night and no one's here, light it up again. If you've got some wood and you come past here, light it up again. Yes! Woo! You're not breaking our law. And many of them other people out there know that they're not that's our law. They know that the, what they are doing is wrong. We don't go and piss on their churches. We don't go and shit on their altars. Why should they come and desecrate ours? Why should they come and desecrate ours? It's not a hard question. If we lose this fight, we may as well all pack up and fucking hang ourselves. This is a fight that no question. This is an attack on the very soul of our people. We don't lose this. Like usual, we're the fellas that are running the flag. We're the ones that are carrying it out there. Let's not let the rest of the country down. Let's not let the rest of our people down. We pick the fight. Let's finish it. Let's finish it. Let's finish with honour, dignity, and in respect of our law. And respect of our, as guests, on other people's country. Let's practice it and let's look after our, our people. Let's walk through here. I pay my respects to the old people, the elders, that have been here all the time. I'll ask Brother Paulie and anybody, any of the other senior people here that want to go through and help with the smoking to go forward to the fire. If you want to help with the smoking, go through for the fire, please. And I'll just ask Brother Ding, come up and DK. If we can have the local people that, from here, the local First Nations people, if they want to go through first, or any of those. And we just ask you to go through, talk to it, tell them who you are, tell them what you're doing here. Don't be shamed. And if we can go through, and then we, once it's gone through in a circle, we just come back and we sit down. symbol of uh, togetherness on this day, and the gesture that we're all one people, all together and full of cause, okay, although well, not entirely a traditional ceremony, this is a symbolic ceremony, symbolic between in Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander, and other non-Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Symbolises togetherness. One people, one mob. We all walk the same song line, the same path. Togetherness. So they put their politics aside. 
We'll keep that protocol of respect in memory of all our ancestors, in memory of all our people that have gone before us, paved the way. Thank you. share a song with us as a symbol of uh, togetherness and one more. You're quite welcome. Yeah. 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 And over to Brother Buddy over here. Gumaroy, Gumaroy. Yama. Yama and Gumaroy means hello and welcome. I'm just gonna do a uh, shower of dance here. This one there, uh, Baroga. Shower of dance. Uh, Yagadanya Nangawanya. I'm a man of the Anuan people. Uh, my my mob are all from Armadale, uh, New South Wales, uh, all around uh, New England area down there. Uh, my great great grand great 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 grandfather was the Anuan tribal man Bungary, and uh, he, along with another Anuan tribal man, were the uh, two, the first two of their tribe to encounter the white invaders. As was the custom of the white the white invaders, they attempted to put certain names, put their own uh, English names on the tribal people. They put the name. James Dixon on my great great grandfather. That's where the Dixon comes in my name, Callum Clayton Dixon. But Bungary refused to adopt that name and he kept that try his tribal name Bungary until the day he died. And that's one of the things we've got to stop doing. We've got to stop letting that colonial government telling us who we are and how to identify. Now my grandfather was a member of the Stolen Generation, Norman Dixon. He was born to an Aboriginal woman and a German father. When he was eight years old, he and his two younger sisters were stolen during the late 1930s and taken into, uh, split up into different homes. And that's one of the things we've got to stop doing. We've got to stop letting that colonial government telling us who we are and how to identify. 